Happy Sunday, everyone! Welcome back to uh, our channel. This is Miss JD once again for a Sunday episode of our daily stock market insights. I want to make sure we are all prepared and uh, ready for the action uh, by tomorrow morning in the Philippine Stock Exchange. So, if you have not watched my video yet, yesterday I recorded uh, the most trending stocks that uh, we had last. Friday and I stopped up to ICT if I'm not mistaken where there you go so in this video I am going to continue um, reviewing the uh, stocks right after ICT and let's see up to which stock can we uh, cover today before I get started if this is the type of video you are interested in watching I'm inviting you to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you're always updated whenever I have new videos. I do record videos daily. Uh, sometimes I'm starting to also deep dive into some of the stocks in the U.S. market and even in the cryptocurrency world. Uh, so, yeah, expect a few more content or more content, uh, not just in the Philippine market, but uh, covering now U.S. market and cryptocurrency. Okay, so let's start. Let us continue with ABBA. ABBA, as you can see here, we have a confirmed bounce, right? So it, it was a good catch here right at the MA20 line. And I think it's just beyond the technicals that's driving the movement of ABBA because uh, definitely uh, this is also influenced by the upcoming project that they have with, with regards to uh, uh, building a digital bank. So I would have to say that we might see some continuation to the upside for ABBA. And uh, the nearest resistance I see at the moment would be around the 1.36 level. So it's up to you if you just want to do range trading for this one or do you want to take advantage of, you know, the bigger picture and uh, that entails for you to stay and hold the stock a little longer but if you just want to quickly trade the stock then 1.37 1.36 would be uh, next resistance that we have and uh, the next possible drop would be in this area over here could be here 1.87 but could also uh, challenge 1.60 first but in the meantime of course we just want to uh, take note of the nearest uh, possible resistance, which is 136. So where would you enter in his in this case? So currently, wherever it is at right now, up to 1.15, just in case there's a a um, highly volatile activity come Monday, then try to get as near as you can to 115. If the market will still give us a chance right there, you know. Next is FNI. Wow, so FNI got rejected here at the uh, resistance area. So this is the resistance. As you notice over here, you had um, three days straight of being uh, rejected right at the resistance level. And uh, at the moment, let me see, not much of a volume, but there's foreign buying that happened. Um, but I, one thing I can say here that is that there is a big chance that this will correct for a while. Uh, we don't know up to how deep it could get, but uh, at the moment I'm seeing 2.73 as a possible area of bounce. And the reason why I'm saying that is because notice this level over here. This is a resistance area. If you look further to the left, there is another resistance over here. So once we manage to cross the uh, resistance level, chances are it would retest that area and create a support so that is the next possible support I am looking at so if you want to consider entering FNI just wait because I still feel that you can get this at a much lower price LODE I really don't know what's the uh, big uh, influencer of LODE or Lodestar investment uh, maybe you can just drop a comment and uh, share whatever you know but as of now, I see for this stock to uh, retest 
our MA20 line probably create a support right at that level. So it's an area, guys. So if, uh, in case it continues to drop like up to this level, then that's still within the range of our support area. So um, if you are interested in getting in this stock, just wait for that perfect opportunity. Tomorrow is not that opportunity um, as of yet. I still feel that this stock could uh, decline further. And uh, let's observe if, it, if our MA20 line will be respected. I really don't know what the news is for this stock. I haven't heard of this even before. SMPH. Wow. So look at this. Normally when a stock goes higher, right, goes up, tendency is it will um, experience some uh, sideways and then... If the volume is starting to decline, then that means people feel that that's already on the ex expensive side and it will uh, decline. And I feel that this is currently what's happening uh, for SMPH. So it has already recovered and people are taking profit. So chances are we could see this stock declining further. And this is where I'm seeing it. So let me just remove this. So chances are it would revisit your previous resistance. See this used to be a resistance here, over here, and it could touch this level again to create that support. Mm -hmm. So let me remove this. So many ads. All right, so it could touch that area, this one, 34.56. Let me add one more for it. Let's see if, uh, okay, several days now you have foreign selling that's happening. URC. URC did a double bottom over here, but sometimes um, your RSI uh, sends us advance uh hint all right so here as you can see while the price did a double bottom your rsi is already showing us some um, you know um improvement it's moving higher but it doesn't guarantee that that's that's already it sometimes we could spend a few more days doing sideways here before it goes up okay uh what we want to see here probably is a green candlestick, something like this, a green candlestick to come out. Uh, but I feel that in just a few days, we might experience that because we already see this. So we just want to see a bullish candlestick forming. Maybe because the body of the candlestick uh, last Friday is starting to become smaller. So if we have a green engulfing, meaning... Uh, let's say a green candlestick higher than 135.40, uh, that's already a good sign that you can enter as this possibly going to bounce pretty soon. Okay. So for example, you want to uh, enter in the stock and um, take profit somewhere here. That's an 8.9% gain or 9. If you want to wait for it to this level, that's an 18% gain. So that's really how it is if you're um, engaging in a blue chip company. Very minimal movements. Imagine this. This is already, a, if you are to look at it, the, uh, the height of uh, the movement is really already significant, but it's only 18%. Next, nickel. Nickel over here did a gap up. Wow. Gap up with volume could mean something good right so maybe my recommendation here is closely observe this stock and the moment it breaks meaning if we have another gap up probably or one candlestick um, to form outside or higher than 599 then that's a confirmation of a breakout okay currently this is your resistance so this is not 100% uh, confirmed breakout as of yet but this is already a good sign. That's a sign that the uh, gap up or the increase in price is 
is supported by volume with noticeable foreign buying. Imagine the foreign buying that happened here compared here. So I feel that something big is about to happen. I just don't know the, the big story here. But please do share. Share what you know in the comment section. At least we could uh, uh, help one another, inform one another about uh, what's influencing a stock. For JFC, uh, we are currently still moving sideways. This for me is still sideways, right? But this is our support now. This is the support I'm looking at, 178. So hopefully if we cross that MA20 line, that's a good sign. And so one hint that I can take or what I can share here is that uh, this is your low and this is your higher low. Now, if you move higher and we create much higher than this point over here, then you have a higher high. If that's the case, then you have, uh, you know, the basic elements of an uptrend. So that's what we are looking forward to see. So at this point, I can say that our support is already at the 178, 179 level. That is already a support area for, for our JFC over here. But don't expect for it to climb up really fast as uh, this is also part of the index and our index is still very unstable as of the moment. Okay, so you we had a green but we're still not out of the woods yet because this is a resistance area for the index. Uh, our MA20 line is still acting as a resistance. Now let's take a look at Ali. Ali looks almost the same as our index we tried to hit the ma20 line trying to break that but we got rejected so i'm still plotting our support at the area where it started so that's our support level around the 38 area see this three days here four move to the left this used to be a resistance area so i think that's a something uh, significant look at this it used to be a resistance as well for here so if you want to try it out we have to observe first if you want just do test buy so uh, at least if it drops you know um, cut your loss early and wait for some stabilization to happen and that's the time you enter uh, at this point do we still have a bigger picture here yeah Previously, we had a resistance around the 53 level. Prim. What is prim? Prim, I don't know the, the uh, business of prim. But I'm not really sure why. Look at this. How many days of uh, solid green? And the volume right now is also uh, huge, right? And uh, some foreign buying. Okay, so my take here, so you have an all-time high at the 224, okay? So we have a resistance, so over at this level, 1.98, yeah, around that area. So this is the area of your resistance. Now, what could be, uh, what could be the next action? Because look at this. We tried to uh, actually break that, but we were unsuccessful. It stopped right in resistance. So this is what you can do. By Monday, if a red candlestick comes out, then that treat that as a sign of weakness. If you want, if you are already profitable, two things. You can either exit 50% and let the 50% uh, uh, stay to uh, take advantage if it will rally some more. Now, if it declines, right, wait for it to reach the lowest point and use the same buying power to buy more shares because you already sold it somewhere here. Okay, At least you don't have to add um, additional funds and still manage to preserve uh, either same amount of shares or even more because you'll be catching it when it dips. But one thing's for sure, you already have locked in some gains by selling maybe 50% of what you initially have. TBGI, I think this is already a bounce. 
it bounced right at the 0.4960 level. Okay, so uh, I'm thinking we need to have that volume. The volume as we increase in the price or bounce, uh, it's not that significant as of yet. So anything can happen. It can still go back to the 0.49 or even break. So we have to closely observe, but if you really want to get in, maybe a test buy would do around the 0.4960 if the price revisits that level. Okay, because there's a gap here. I hope, I'm not sure when will that be filled. Around the 0.45, but it's very near if it is going to be filled. JGS, JGS managed to recover, but very minimal, 1.96%. I think that this is still within the downtrend channel, right? Look at that, higher lows or lower highs, I mean. So this was your high before we dropped, we recovered, but this time around, it's much lower than the previous one. And... Um, this over here, this is the uh, recent support. So try to observe if this will be respected. So if we got rejected here, if it drops, we should not break the 6186. Until such time, we either break to the upside or we have a breakdown in the price. But overall, what we want to see is, of course, a, a breakout of the uh, descending resistance over here. For now, just... Try to peg if you want to put your order, go as near as you can to the 61.86 level. JGS, I believe, is also one of the stocks in the index. SM. SM is... So what do we mean by this? Green. Uh, we had a green last Friday, but the volume is so small. So if it continues to move higher, just be extra careful around this key level over here because the uh, resistance might re reject again the price considering that when we increased in the price, the volume is not that much. So uh, this, is, this could just be uh, you know, a few individuals with deep pockets and uh, they, they push the price like institutions, you know. They push the price and uh, enticing more retailers. And by the time the price reaches 1,083, they could easily uh, sell their position and then price will go down again. So at this point, I'm just plotting the MA20 line as our support area. And then this is the resistance. But of course, my recommendation is for you not to rush it because I feel that there will be fluctuation and it will revisit the 1,037 level. But overall, we are very near our resistance. And while we hit the resistance level multiple times, look at your RSI declining. That means the uh, buying sentiment is uh, slowly uh, diminishing as uh, we touch the same level multiple times. Okay. Where are we now? BPI. BPI is also very near a possible resistance. So uh, I, I don't expect a lot of big movements for, the, for BPI, especially because, of course, your index is also on the defensive side. So I'm thinking there could be some possibilities that it will, already, it will also be rejected at the, at the uh, resistance level. Okay, so... The safest, I would say, is wait for it to break out, but I'm not expecting for that to happen anytime soon. So chances are this support will still be revisited. We don't know if it's going to happen tomorrow or anytime next week. That could still be revisited. So if you want to get in, wait for it to reach the cheaper levels <clears throat> before you get in. Pure gold. Pure gold... Not much movement. We're still moving below the MA20 line. So I'm thinking there's even a possibility that it could go back to the 36, 36 level again. 
So, yeah. That's our nearest support. Still being rejected at the MA20 line. So chances are it could go back to 36.67. AR. AR, I am not expecting a lot for this stock because really there's no big big news or big influencer that could push the price higher um, anytime soon. So I'm thinking we might go back to this kind of movement as before. It will go sideways first and then wait for that big, big news or whatever projects that they are going to have. So if um, you're still considering AR, I suggest try to consider other stocks if you have not engaged in AR as of yet. Try to consider other stocks. At one point, I also entered in the stock considering that I wanted for this to um, recover after a big dip. But there was a recovery, but it only got reached up to the 0 0.0061 level. Uh, farthest was 63. And that was it. Okay, so it created a lower high. So chances are we could revisit the previous support or we could even break it. So, <clears throat> not much movement here. Tell is with Dito um, as another competition for, for PLDT. I don't have a lot of expectations for PLDT to soar higher as what we had previously, where at one point it even reached the 2000 or 3000 level. I'm thinking we might experience some more uh, correction and decline as we go near Dito's uh, launch date. Okay, so we might see some more declines for PLDT over here. The nearest support I am seeing is around the 1260. Okay, 1260 at the moment because of this one and this one too. So, of course, if it drops some more, then I could just plot easily. Uh, the next levels of support but uh, for now imagine the drop from this point to this point that's a, a near to possibility so I hope you have already uh, chosen your your stocks and uh, I hope whatever your position is or positions are right now they're um, yielding good results and good luck in your trades tomorrow and uh, next week uh, I hope we all are profitable. Looking forward to uh, big moves from Dito, APL, ASEN, ABBA, PHA. Those are uh, the hot picks in the past few weeks. And I think there will be continuation this week. So that's it, guys. Thank you for watching. And you have a happy, happy Sunday. Bye-bye for now.